To understand the specific nature of Japan as a security actor, we need to look a little bit at the historical background in which it evolves, starting, of course, with its constitution. The Constitution of Japan was written in 1947 in a Japan that was completely destroyed by the Second World War. It was supposed to implement the terms of the Potsdam Declaration, which were guaranteeing the complete surrender, demilitarization and democratization of Japan. We need to be reminded that Japan at the time was not a sovereign nation. It was under the occupation of the Allied forces until 1952 for the Japanese mainland and until 1972 for Okinawa. Unlike in Europe, the Allied forces did not divide the Japanese territory among themselves, but the occupation was conducted under the authority of the Supreme Commander of the Allied Powers, General Douglas MacArthur. Uh, we need to understand, therefore, that the Constitution was basically written by the Americans, General MacArthur and his team, although the Japanese had the possibility to eventually revise um, the text. As opposed to the previous Meiji constitution of Japan, uh, which was very much authoritarian and centered on the role of the Japanese emperor, the new constitution establishes a democratic parliamentary system which promotes human rights and where the emperor plays only a symbolic role. The key attribute and the most novel part of the Japanese constitution is the complete renunciation of war, which is guaranteed by its Article 9. Here, Japan forever renounces war as a sovereign right of the nation and the threat or use of force as means for settling international disputes. To this goal, it also pledges to renounce on maintaining any sort of fully fledged army. The Article 9 is a unique example worldwide. Uh, and it is also the reason why we refer to the Japanese constitution as a peace or pacifist uh, constitution. It is also the reason why we sometimes refer to Japan as an abnormal security actor, as opposed to the normal attributes and behaviors uh, of any other sovereign nation. Now, that does not mean that Japan is left completely defenseless. Already in 1954, Japan was allowed to establish its self-defense forces to provide for the security of its national territory, to address all the domestic threats, disasters, terrorism, you name it. It is divided into ground, air and maritime self-defense forces, very much like a regular army, with the only exception that it can act solely within the jurisdiction uh, and area of the Japanese territory. Today, it also particip participates in international peacekeeping efforts and in the safeguard of security of maritime trade, which is a key strategic interest for Japan as an island nation. The, um, anything that relates to the external security is guaranteed by the United States in the framework of the US-Japan uh, Security Alliance. This was established in 1951 along the San Francisco Treaty and eventually amended in 61 in order to establish a permanent US military presence on Japanese soil. To date, we count about 50,000 uh, US military personnel in Japan under the United States Forces of Japan, which are part, integral part of the uh, Japanese uh, security and defense. Finally, in order to compensate a little bit for this lacunas, Japan has been heavily investing in what we call building a favorable security environment in its neighborhood and beyond. Uh, it does so and always did so through an active economic diplomacy, also known as a checkbook diplomacy, by providing development assistance to its neighbors, especially during the Cold War uh, period, by supporting regional multilateral frameworks such as ASEAN and more recently by investing in, in defense diplomacy, in uh, active uh, defense dialogue and trainings and capacity buildings in its regional and global, with its regional and global partners. Uh, we mentioned the specific nature of Japan as an island nation and, its, and the importance of maritime trade. 
In that respect, Japan has always engaged also for providing safety of the regional maritime routes. As an example, it was Japan that throughout the 70s and 80s has set up uh, the, the traffic separation schemes in the Straits of Malacca that has set up earthquake monitoring mechanisms along those uh, sea lanes of communications in Southeast Asia. Keeping in mind Japan's constitutional limitations, uh, let's have a look at the security environment and challenges it needs to deal with on an everyday basis. We can safely say that one of the greatest problems of Japan is that it's located in an extremely tense, volatile and complex security environment of Northeast Asia. It is surrounded by nuclear powers, Russia, China and of course North Korea without any offensive capabilities or nuclear power of its own. It is also surrounded by countries that keep a very negative image of Japan, legacy of its imperialist uh, expansion, uh, and that perpetuate and exploit this image in their nationalist discourse. Finally, Japan as an island nation is also entirely dependent on maritime traffic and trade for its resources and for the survival of its economy. Most of these trade routes pass uh, through some of the most burning regional security hotspots, the Taiwan Straits or the South China Sea, which justifies Japan's interest and concern in the freedom, safety and security of these sea lines. If that wasn't enough, uh, Japan's bilateral relations with its neighbors are also poisoned by several sovereignty and territorial maritime territorial disputes. Concretely, it is the dispute over their northern territories or the southern corals for the Russians with the Russian Federation. It is the dispute over the Takeshima Dokdo Island in the East, in the East Sea or Sea of Japan with South Korea. And finally, a dispute over the Senkaku Jiayu Islands with China. To give you a little bit of an idea of the hostility or the toxicity of the regional security environment, here you can see a number of intrusions by foreign aircraft into Japan's um, uh, territorial and airspace. While the Russian ones, have become uh, pretty much constant and is a legacy also of the of the Cold War, you can see a clear increase of the Chinese military activity of the activity of the Chinese PLA Air Force, uh, which corresponds pretty much with the, the growing military prowess uh, of China and assertiveness in the region. Looking at the flight patterns, you can clearly distinguish between the Russian ones, uh, which is concentrated in the northern part of the Japanese territory, although in sometimes adventuring all around the Japanese, uh, Japanese islands, and the Chinese military activity, which is concentrated in the southwest above the uh, disputed East China Sea. In comparison, on the right, you can see the full extent of the Japanese air defense identification zone, which is much, much broader. And for your interest, also the inclusion, the unilateral proclamation of the Chinese uh, East China identification, uh, East China Sea identification zone uh, in 2013, which we will talk about uh, more in detail in the next section. <laughs> 